into that in this study, which are basically characteristics of the spirit, what happens is there's something that's in the link of the spirit process that has to convert those fruits in the spirit to spiritual energy so that my spirit man does something. Now we're fixing to hit, hit home. Where everybody get this. Some of y'all are Bible readers. We read that thing in the book of James in chapter 2. It talks about uh, faith without works is dead. Amen. All right, now, I'm going to tie that in here so you really grab this. All right, your spirit man without works is dead. Or should I say faith or your spirit man without righteous works is dead. Because understand, the insulin piece for your spiritual man is the works that you do. Don't get the thing twisted, because a lot of people, uh, uh, you know, even to this day, think it's all about the works that they do. And we all know it ain't your works that's going to get you to heaven. Uh, uh, but the thing is, your works are what convert the fruits of the Spirit into the energy that's needed for your spiritual man to operate. Hope somebody got this. Your spirit man is going to be willy lump lump and do nothing if it's not being given the, 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 the energy that it needs to perform. Y'all notice this is, this is like basic physics that I'm giving you, but, it's, but it's, it's now brought to you in a spiritual concept. It, it, it's the same thing as this. Everybody eats food on a day-to-day -day basis, but that don't mean that everybody's body is conditioned with right muscular definition. Amen? So what happens? A person can even go to the GNC and buy protein, supplements, vitamins, etc. However, that is nothing but, but vitamins or proteins that you're putting in the body, but without exercise, they're doing nothing. Amen? It takes a person to exercise what they're putting in in order to get a product or something produced. And see, the thing is, we don't need to have a bunch of people in the body of Christ overweight with spiritual things because they're not exercising what's being poured into them. Okay, that may be an ouch moment right there, but we know if it's tight, it's still going to be right. There is too much of spiritual food being deposited into the body of Christ, but people ain't doing nothing with it. And see, we have to understand that if I don't do nothing with it, it causes me to be a diabetic in the spirit. Diabetics have to have insulin or insulin shots to help their body process or work the sugars in order to give them the energy. I, I, I hope I'm not speaking to deaf ears right now. So in the same turn, God is saying that right now, it's one thing for you to know what the spirit is. It's two things for you to know that the spirit has fruits that are called characteristics. Number three that you need to know, however, is in order for you to have a healthy spirit as you eat a lot of spiritual sugars, there's some things that you've got to do to process those spiritual sugars in order to give you the energy and the definition that you need in order to operate according to my will and be in right standing. Amen? Amen. Let, 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 let me go back here to Romans Romans chapter 8, verse 23, and it says, And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. Now, let, let, let me jump a little bit into just this verse alone. Amen? All right? It says, basically, within ourselves, we have a, a desire for the adoption and redemption of our body due to all of us having the first fruits of the Spirit. Because that's what it says right here. It says, and not only they, but ourselves, which is inclusive of everybody that's listening, <clears throat> all of us that come into a revelation that we're the children of God and that we're spiritual beings, it says, we have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves. 
All right, so watch this. Let's look at that word first fruits. Amen. Notice that it's not fruits, but it says first fruits. And the Greek word for first fruits is aparke. All right. Now, aparke means to offer firstly or to offer the first portion, which is sacred. All right. It is also defined as the beginning of a sacrifice. Now, let, let me bring that into clarity for everybody to grab this. Basically, all of us have within us the first fruits of the Spirit. Meaning, first fruits is just like, as some, of, some people can grab, it's like tithing. When, when, you, when you obtain things, whether it's financial or, or whether it's produce, whether it's property, the thing is, the first part of that before you begin to disseminate it anywhere else, automatically goes to God. So, what the scripture says here is within all of us is a portion of our spirit that should be dedicated to God first and foremost. Before anything else begins to process itself in our spirit, there's an element of it that says it needs to belong to God. Amen? Because... In the reality of the matter, understand this. Notice that as an individual, how is it that we always feel like we need to belong to something? Okay, that might be deep for somebody right there. Have a station break. Notice that as an individual, all of us at some point in our life have a desire to belong to something. Whether it's a fraternity, a sorority, or organization, i.e. a church, we have a desire within ourselves to belong to something. Even when it comes to marriages, we have a desire that we want to belong to somebody else. Why is that? Unless it's an innate element within us that has a desire to never be alone. Okay, still deep. A portion of us always has a desire to be connected to something else. It's not about our physical body. It's about a spiritual need that everybody has. You know, you know even, even in society, everything that we join, it ain't that our body want to join it. It's what our spirit man wants to join. If I go join the gym, it ain't my body physically tell, telling my spirit, Hey, I, I need to go join the gym. No, it's my spirit saying, hey, we need to go uh, uh, join the gym to get in shape. So there's something that's built within our spirit to always want to belong. If somebody out there that's a Star Trek fan, uh, 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 back a couple of, couple of uh, a series ago, there was uh, a, a generation of, of Star Trek series that was about the Borg, the collective, the collective mind. All those individuals that were bored had to be part of the collective. If they were disconnected, they felt like they could do nothing on their own. They had to be plugged back in to a central source or a centralized mind. Okay, could it be that there was a revelation there, even in sci-fi, regarding something that God had as a real concept for us as spiritual beings? The thing is, right now, we're operating solo, but God wants us to be connected back into the collective. The collective is everybody being in a righteous place of their mind because of the fruits that they've had fed to them. See, the Borg, even as a society of cyborgs, were getting information fed to them from one source. So, understand this. I'm giving you the flip of that. As spiritual beings, there's a thing that we have to tie back in to God. But tying back in first involves itself with the spiritual fruits being our IV. There's something that's got to be fed into us and processed in order for us to say, yeah, this is good and I don't need to have a disconnect. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. So... Right here, back at verse 23, it says, Even we ourselves, grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, 
to with the redemption of our body. All right? Now, notice, as I said, we have an innate ability within ourselves that we want to be connected. Our spirit man uh, does not want to be alone. That's why the word articulates the word adoption here, which is euothesia in the Greek, all right? But it means to come back in right standing or basically to connect back in. Now, this is saying, however, it's done through redemption, which is a price being paid, or as I like to say, the bartering concept. As we know, Christ died on the cross 2,000 years ago to get us where we are now. The thing is now, there's a price that we've got to pay in return to, to justify or make that debt now be uh, 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 resolved. It comes back into balance. So how does it come back into balance other than, first of all, my spirit, me being willing to offer up my spirit unto God? If I'm going to be fed by God, like I said, you don't slap the hand that feeds you. If God is spiritually feeding you, then you should be wanting to be connected back into him. And that's why the desire is within our spirit to give ourselves back to God. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. Praise God, praise God. Let, 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 let's, let's run to another scripture, amen. Let's go to the book of James, amen. I know some people have the Bible study notes, but I'm going a little bit from that because I don't like throwing something out there without bagging it up for people to see in black and white that I'm not making this up. It's right here in the Word. We just got to have a revelation of understanding to put it into context, amen. So watch this, uh, James chapter 2, and... There's a couple of verses I want to read to you. I want to read to you verse 18. I want to read to you verse 20 and verse 26. Amen. Verse 18, it says, Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Now, notice it says, uh, Thou hast faith. And I have works, okay? Faith means conviction, all right? But allow me to paraphrase. We, we're we're going to use that as, as fruits. My faith yokes itself to my fruits. I've got some fruits in my spirit, but I need to also have works. So let's say if I've got another individual here with me, they've got the fruits, I've got the works, okay? Now the scripture says, show me thy faith or thy fruit without thy works. And I will show thee my fruit by my works. In everything the scripture is saying, it brings us to this revelation that your character, which is your spirit, is defined by your works versus your works being defined by your character. Let me say that again. My character or my spirit man is defined by the works that I do. My works, however, do not be defined by my character. Let me give that to you in simplicity where you can grab this. I can think within myself that I'm an architect all day long. However, if I get up in the morning and go put on a hard hat and steel toe shoes, overalls, and a tool belt, and I go do construction work, I'm defined as a construction worker, not an architect. Hear me. Architect designs buildings construction worker builds them. So, if I'm going to be an architect, then the works that I do on a day-to-day -day basis got to line up with the character of an architect. I hope somebody feel me right there. I can't mix and match my character with my works. 